Thanks for tuning in to another episode of WGC Fits. Today we are going to talk about some myths in golf. Um, helping us out today, we have the ball speeds, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hi. <laughs> so, what what are we uh, what are we doing today, Ian? We got five or six myths that we're going to debunk today about club fitting and golf clubs in general in the most scientific ways possible. Sure. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, do you need to be a good player to get fit? Right? Now, everybody sees you get all get fit all the time, Ian. Now, I all would say time. you're a fairly accomplished golfer. Right? Yes. What's, what's your handicap? Right now, plus two and 2.7. 2.7. And you, every year, make it a run at trying to go and make a U.S. Open, right? Yes. Okay. So... <laughs> You've been fit a lot, right? And we've seen pretty good results, right? We always learn new stuff about your swing. It's ever changing, everything like that, right? Can't smell closed. Can't smell closed. If it smells closed, it's just, just bad, right? We know that. Um, now, Sam, we have done a fitting for you, yes. right? And we have had some pretty good results, right? Now, talk a little bit about your golf time frame. So I started up golf when I was late in my high school career. Mm -hmm. And then I was never really a good golfer, but I was always told, well, you're a female golfer, keep pursuing for mm -hmm. scholarships and Makes such. Makes sense. So I miraculously got a scholarship in college to play college golf. Mm -hmm. um, I was the, the ringer, not the ringer, the anti-ringer. The last anti person. Oh. <laughs> Last in loud number six. Uh, what would you shoot? I would shoot probably like around 120. Okay. For 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, then after college? Talk about col after college, exactly. Um, yeah, so I honestly felt a lot of like, it sounds kind of weird, not really, but like a lot of shame and judgment for being so bad at golf, but saying like, oh, you played college golf, you must be so good. I'm like, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and then I, but that, I know it sounds silly to say out loud, but I, I just had this feeling of like, well, I'm not good enough to go out and play, mm -hmm. especially when my husband is like a golfer. Um, he's like right. I always, <laughs> he's not too jelly. <laughs> um, there was definitely part of like, I felt like I was embarrassing to him or to me, or I know we're getting into the, into the feels, but mm -hmm. like, um, it was like, I don't know. I just didn't want to show up and, and, you and know, I think embarrass people. You actually took a good chunk of time off, right? I did. I took, I probably, we both did, actually. well, you took two years two off. Years. Mm -hmm. I took five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I took five years off from like, right after I finished college golf, I took five years off. I didn't even touch a club. Mm -hmm. Ian would still occasionally go to the range once or, or twice, something once or twice year. in that, in this <laughs> two years off. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I, I just I was like I don't want to be involved in golf mm -hmm. again because You're done. there was just a lot of drama, like mental drama around mm -hmm. like when I was playing, mm -hmm. I wasn't playing well um, until we joined a club mm -hmm. um, and Ian got back into golf and naturally as part of you know being a past golfer but also like in partnership with each mm -hmm. other. We wanted to good quality time. Yeah, mm -hmm. just just date nights and yeah. date days and mm -hmm. um, something to talk about and something to enjoy to do together. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, "Hey, let's go golf again." And mm -hmm. so there was definitely like the first year of Ian going back into it. Like, I would I maybe went like two or three times that year. I think I went a few more. Maybe a few more. Um, but it was just like. I only did it out of like I had to, yeah. rather than like I felt like, oh sure, golf will be fun, mm -hmm. like kind of thing. But you would still shoot your score. But I would still shoot. I would yeah. say, do you I remember roughly shoot. what you were shooting when you first started getting back into it? Um, I don't know if I ever like officially played 18 holes when I mm -hmm. started getting back into it. We don't play nine. We would only play nine because I didn't enjoy yeah. like mm -hmm. playing for that long. Um, but I had a lot of bad shots, like still getting back into it. And it, it kind of was like, I don't know, like almost like PTSD of like, oh, yeah. here we go again. Yeah. Like, I'm still, I'm still suck. Like, you know, like it's just going to be like this for the rest of my life kind of thing. But it wasn't your fault. It was the club's fault. Which I learned. Leads that, to our question. Yeah. yeah. Then you got fit, right? right? And then I got fit. 
Now, let's talk about golf when did she get fitting. Fit? When did she get fit? Last February? Uh, it was, there was, it was snow on the ground. It was February. It was cold. Um, uh, it was February or March, actually, because yeah. it was there was snow. Like March. snow. Yeah, there was I think snow. It was closer to March. Mm-hmm. We'll link her videos right here. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's a really good fitting. I think we did really well. But you had a couple of things that we learned in the fitting going on that were really kind of hurting you from golf, right? Yeah. First and foremost, we we needed a little bit of help in terms of trying to get the ball up in the air, mm-hmm. right? We talked about a little bit of technique stuff, kind of got you delivering the club a little bit better, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's talk. You know, from there on, talk about golf and how it's improved for you. Yeah, I mean, so ever since I've gotten fit, I got my new clubs. Um, I actually like. You shot ninety. I shot ninety last, last year. year. Very. I mean, if I shoot any more than a hundred, it's like it's wow, bad it's day. Like what are you bad doing? day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like without even trying though, like or changing your swing or changing my mm-hmm. swing, like it's an easy one hundred normally a few less or something Mm -hmm. i have never shot my 120 again yeah and now it's when i'm on the range or just generally playing i can get it really nice in the air and i'm like holy crap like Mm -hmm. i'm not even really trying like i'm just hitting Mm -hmm. the ball how i was previously but the new clubs just totally changed Changed your game everything right yeah now i've seen you hit like some drivers of note right like just seeing you actually crush the ball off the tee now and I know that also you're, you're bumping up in terms of the competitive level of playing now, right? Because before you were playing in like your nine holes and all that kind of stuff, right? Now you're doing 18s, right? Mm-hmm. And you're even going to play some tournaments this year, right? Yeah, yeah. So last year I joined as a way to kind of put myself out there to practice golf a little bit more. I joined the nine holders at our local country mm-hmm. club. And then um, this year... I actually joined 18 holers, mm-hmm. so I play at least 18 holes once a week. Mm-hmm. And then um, because my score has improved so much over the last year, my handicap, um, I was asked to be a part of the um, local women's mm-hmm. um, golf association. Golf association. Mm-hmm. So now I play competitively, um, like on a like my country club's team. Mm-hmm. I go and travel and. Play with, them. play with them. Yeah, it's awesome. So that's super fun. Now, what is your current handicap? My current handicap is right around twenty. Twenty. So we probably what? It's about bogey golf. Yeah, we cut it in half almost. Yes. Oh yeah, easily cut it in half. Pretty good. Like just bogey golf, which for me, that's. For most pretty, people, pretty that's pretty good. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trust me. It's enjoyable. Um, <laughs> that's not not male or female. That's just pretty good golf. You mm-hmm. know. Um, now. How would you answer that question then if someone asked you, you know, are you good enough to get fit, quote unquote? Honestly, like, it doesn't really matter if you're a good golfer or bad golfer, like based on where you're at right now, Mm -hmm. because until you have at least the opportunity to essentially like wave off of like, are my clubs a problem? Mm -hmm. You don't know until you get fit. For me, that was my problem. For me, it was my clubs. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to change my swing. I didn't have to take all these obscene lessons. For me, changing the club shaved off 20 points on my handicap. Like that that was was huge. Club change and and literally the only instruction-y stuff that we did was what, a 15 minute conversation about setup? Literally. That was it, right? Yeah. Super simple stuff. So just goes to show you when it comes to Am I good enough to get fit? I think everybody should give it a chance. 100%. You know, give it a go and see what happens because you never know. You yeah. Know? All right. So myth number two. What's myth number two, Mr. Ballspeed? That, that everyone needs a three wood. Let's sound off real quick. Who plays a three wood in this room? Crickets. Okay. okay. Well, I guess that's it. I play a four wood. If you want to see me get fit for it, it's right here. And I play a five wood. Yeah, and you can also see it right here. And my fairway wood's also a pseudo five wood. Yeah, like a four strong five wood. It's like a five, like seven wood. Yeah, but every player's different every when it comes to fairway wood. Exactly. Like so Fleetwood plays a strong three wood. Dustin Johnson for a long time played a technically a seventeen degree fairway wood. Yeah, and know? he has a seven wood. Yeah, so it's one of those things where does every golfer need a three wood? No, truth be told, I can't remember the last time I fit someone into a proper three wood, Yeah, right? Because for me, it goes too far. With her, she couldn't get it up in the air. 
Yeah, I mean, when we were doing with you, we saw a couple go out to 340. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it's silly. We don't need a three wood to go that far. And no. then with you, Sam, because we know that we're trying to work on getting more loft behind the ball, which is something that everybody needs to work on, mm -hmm. right? Three wood just didn't have enough loft, yep. you know? For me, it's more of a, I find a five wood slash seven wood much more versatile than a three wood would be, right? I hit that club off anything, you know? Yep. But with a three wood, it'd be a little bit challenging to to really kind of do anything other than a tee shot, I feel like. And I don't like putting one dimensional golf clubs in a golf bag. Um, I don't really know, honestly, I really can't tell you the last time I put someone into a standard three wood. I build a lot of like Frankenwoods here, like four woods and stuff, but. I'm a four wood fan now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a big three wood guy. I'm trying to think, I honestly can't remember. So, just cause to show you, three wood, I don't think it's a thing. Yeah. You know? With number three is that everyone needs 14 clubs in the bag. That is false. Yeah, I have Just 16. Flat out false. I have 16, so. <laughs> I can go from 16 to 7 pretty quick. Yeah. It just depends, you know. Now, I have 16 because I play competitive golf, and I'll just take out a 2-iron or a 3-hybrid, depending on the layout, for specific purposes. But Sam only has, what, 12? 12. 12. Yeah, 12. I only have 12. And they're 12. gaffed properly. Yeah. And, that's the, and that's, that's what it is. That's what I wanted to talk about was, mm -hmm. from a gapping perspective, that's the most important thing. So... If you hit the ball 210 yards off the tee, you're not going to have 14 clubs, no. right? Mm -hmm. If you hit the ball 330 yards off the tee, you're going to have 14 clubs, right? Um, even me, right? I don't have 14 clubs that I, I don't always play with 14 clubs, I should say. Um, you know, often I go out because I like to walk, I'll bring a half set, you know? And as long as you have proper yardages and proper gaps set up, you can play golf like that, right? Yeah. Um, and no one says what those 14 clubs have to be, right? Our, everybody's favorite lefty on the Live Golf Tour now. He, uh, what, was that the PGA last year or was it two years ago? He had two drivers. Whenever he won. No. Augusta, he had two drivers. No, the, the one he won, though. He had two drivers in the bag? Yeah, Callaway right. built him a mini driver. Okay. okay. Yeah, he had a... a one for straight shot and one for power fade. But yeah, like you can have... The, the set makeup can be whatever it wants, and I don't care what the set makeup is, as long as the gapping makes sense. That's the key here. Um, you know, everybody's 14 club set, if you have a 14 club set, also isn't the same. You know? Right. Um, so what clubs do you rotate in your bag in? Uh, two iron, three hybrid, and three wood. Okay. Now, what dictates what clubs are brought? And technically a 64 degree, but that's for fun. But um, just off the tee, mainly. Mm -hmm. And if I play an extremely short course, I'll put the 64 in the back. For fun, yeah. Because it's fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> for me, the clubs that rotate are two iron, two wood type club, and then uh, actually my four iron. Yeah. So those are the clubs that go in and out depending on where I'm playing and, and what the course looks like. So yeah. yeah, 14 clubs, not important. Better question, get gapped properly. Yeah. Make sure that, you know, you don't have three clubs that go the same distance. I always want, when people leave the bay, I want people to have a specific club for a specific yardage, and I don't want it to be a confusing kind of conversation you have to have yourself on the back, yeah. you know? So, makes sense. All right, myth number four. All right, the next myth we are gonna talk about is having to do with four irons, five irons, and trying to manipulate lofts, so. I was playing with a guy a week or two ago, said he doesn't carry a four iron because he can turn his five iron into a four iron by putting it in the back of his stance. And I just kind of look at him weird and said, okay. Now, let's, let's spl explain a little bit about, well, hold on. Let's hit these first and yeah, then let's we'll hit explain why. So this so is this my is five iron. Five iron, this is gonna be a normal five iron. Normal five iron. And that's nice and high and perfect. It's a good ball flight. Yeah. So now what I want you to do, Ian, is I want you to, to quote unquote punch a five iron. And this is where- And you still want me to get it, like the, he was trying to hit his five iron farther in correct. the back yeah. of the and, and this And, and this is, this is kind of how, this and is why that's that. different, why it doesn't work. Because we're gonna see certain aspects of these ball flights that are gonna be quite different, okay? Yeah. So what I want you to do here is, I want you to do essentially what this guy was saying he could do yeah. between a four and a five iron and why he didn't need a longer iron. So this is gonna be the... The attempt of a four iron 
Four now, iron. I might hit this way right because of the path problem, but. Four iron with a five iron. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm going to be gonna having get, to come even farther down. It, it's going to get funky. I think I could hit it straight, though. Right, Sam? <laughs> yeah, that was still fine. Like, that's just lower. Like, a well, lot that's lower. the ticket. It's lower ball flight, right? Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to look at four irons. An actual four iron. And we're going to do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I just pulled it. It was right where I was aiming. Huh? I like where I'm aiming, apparently. We're going to use the first one. That was too low. What? That okay, was low where we're using the first one. I just gave her to that. Except you crushed it. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's review the, the myth real quick, if you will. Um, wow, those are right on top of each other. The myth <laughs> being, yeah, you hit them really well. <laughs> the myth being, and again, it goes to show you why this is a myth, right? Yes. So when you're delivering a club, with four iron loft, you are going to be de-lofting it because you need to de-loft it a little bit to compress the ball, yeah. right? And that is going to be delivering a specific lofted impact. When we add more loft, right, you can't really get yourself to a position where de-lofting that club is going to put you in the similar window as the longer of the irons, yeah. right? So we're gonna look at what the normal five iron did. The normal five iron went 121 feet in the air. Which is perfect had a 50 degree landing angle, Perfect. carried 208. Perfect. That was actually pretty good. Now, when you hit the, the half kind of swing or whatever it was, right? Yeah. What we're seeing is it went 91 feet in the air. Lower. You lost five degrees of landing angle. Yeah. You carried Carry it, it short. Well, not much though. We're talking not like much. exactly the same pretty much, yeah. right? 206 to 214.9 yeah. versus 208 to 214.7. Yeah. So what did we actually do by delivering different lofts? Just hit it low. Right? That was it. And, and again, here's the other thing that's interesting. We look at our dynamic lofts. We definitely adjusted loft. You were at 17 on the normal. You were at 12.8 on the full, right? So yeah. you definitely did alter your delivery, okay? However, the ball flight did nothing, right? It's the exact same It just went flight. lower. It went lower, and that means on the opposite end, what it's going to actually do is not stop, Correct. essentially, right? So it just doesn't kind of add up. Now, yeah. if we look at what the actual four iron does, we hit two same shots dynamic with the four iron. loft. Dynamic loft was different. No, it's the same as the punch five. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, similar, I should say. I said different. No, wait, click the punch to. five. Yeah, it's the same thing. But the difference is the club's longer, right? With the club being longer, you're going to, even though you're delivering this, ball speed goes up. Yeah. Right? Ball speed goes up and club speed goes up. So dynamics of the shot are different, even if we're delivering the club in a fairly similar window. The main thing is, essentially, when you tried to do what you were trying to do, your five iron didn't go any farther, and your four iron is still going 15 yards farther. Yeah. In terms of carry. Correct. So. I got to soften my four iron loft a little. It is, going, it is going kind of far. <laughs> yeah. So we might want to keep that a hair. We but, might then. Maybe um, one degree. Yeah. Myth busted, right? You yeah. can't sit there and simply turn your four iron or five iron into a four iron. Correct. Right? Realistically, if you're not putting a four iron in the bag, there's probably a reason. We yeah. probably don't want to try to do that on the golf then course Then just get anyways. a four hybrid. Exactly. Four hybrid, seven wood, something like yeah. that. Going to be better off. Okay. Now, the last myth we're going to talk about today in. This is something that we have talked about and we have tested a lot. And I already know I'm not gonna like it. Nope, you're gonna hate it. So what we are gonna be looking at right now is lighter versus heavier and how they affect swing speed. Was it lighter is faster? Lighter potentially leads to faster club speed. Yeah. Okay. Now we have tested this, like I said, I don't even know how many videos now, but we've also done quite a bit of testing outside of like filming stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Cause it's something that me and you have both been very curious about, Correct. right? Does lighter actually equate to something that makes sense? Correct. And I'm gonna say no, right? Yeah. 
Um, so we're gonna start off with your driver. Now this is the bracket challenge winner. Yeah. Let's go over the specs pretty exactly on what this is. It's a Tensei 1K70 Torflex, so it's around 80 grams. 78 grams, Tensei orange, yeah. right? Now, ping driver LST, oh, yeah. G right? G430, nine degree LST. And what's the swing weight at? D7. D7, so this is, when, it, when we talk about heavy, even though this is counterbalanced, it's pretty heavy. This is heavy. Right, but. And I like it. We saw some of your fastest ball speeds with it, yeah. right? And some of your fastest club speeds with Correct. it when we were doing the testing. So let's let's go. Well, how many you want? You want two? You want three? What do we'll you want? We'll hit two. Two. All I need with this is two. Okay. Or just one. Perfect. Okay. So, one hundred twenty-one point six with one hundred eighty ball speed. That's just. A I'm lot not of really fast. complaining. That's just a lot of fast. That's what that and is. And that's right where I want it to end up. So. Mm -hmm. That's your cut. That's your cut that goes 335 yards. Yeah. Okay, so let's put in a much lighter shaft now. So. What is this? We're going from a 78 roughly gram shaft, um, X-Flex Tensei Orange 1K, to the Ping Ulta 55 X-Flex. Now, this is a fairly stiff shaft, right? It's lightweight, but it's fairly stiff, something that I have in the past fit guys who swing X, you know, X kind of swing speed drivers into. Um, but this is greatly lighter than what you have. The thing that's important here is it's still counterbalanced. So it's still a pretty good window from a testing perspective for it. Try and keep it as apples to apples as we can, given the fact that this is a great deal lighter. Oh so, God. Um, <laughs> now let's, let's bear with, let's say, do you, do you want some practice shots with this? To what? Break no, it? We're, we're just hitting it. Just letting it rip. Okay. So, this is ball speed boomstick with a lighter shaft. Oh my God, I can't feel this thing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just to hear it whipping through. So you're only like, I don't know, 180 yards my right of where you're from? I can't. So you don't even have to hit again because it proves nope, our point. No, nope, we're doing it one more time. We're giving a little one? bit of a chance. Okay. Let her, I was going to say, we're, we're slower. This is, a, this is a good bit lighter, but we're slower. Oh, I can just feel it do this at impact. Like it's not even trying, but it's the same. That was closer. That was, I actually tried to hit that harder. Mm -hmm. You tried and you gained less than I think a mile an hour ball speed. Wait. Let me try to actually like hit it a little hard. Cause I'm actually trying to hit it harder than my normal shaft. Just give me your normal swing. Oh, okay. That was about normal. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's slower, lovely. And that's what I'm saying. That's weird. Lighter is not faster, right? Now let's, let's think about this real quick here, right? What do we use to help propel things in a golf swing? It's weight. Yeah. Weight is what helps propel things through a golf swing. It's what we feel. When yeah. we can feel things, we can kind of use better balance to get through it, more efficient body movements to get through it. So heavier can equal faster for certain people. Yes. And from my experience, most of the time, it's it's like a 50-50 split, right? Yeah. Sometimes lighter is better, but there's always a trade-off, right? Lighter often also means that stuff's a little spinnier. Heavier often means that stuff doesn't spin enough, right? It depends on the player. So it's it actually a all, good spin number. Well, it was great. I mean, you hit it decent. Um, but like I said, it's just, that's nowhere near what you're playing. Yeah. No. So it all depends on what we're looking for and what we're trying to achieve and Correct. the player's dynamic delivery. So like, lighter does not always equal faster. Like this feels like a board. Now, but, yeah. But that thing feels like a little rope. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is recently I fit a guy into that shaft who swings faster than you. This shaft? No, that shaft. Oh, no. You wanted to film this video, not me. <laughs> God, I love that. We're back, baby. Yeah. 180, 121. Like, that's not, that's, that's like the same swing I just tried with the other golf club. And it's faster, yeah. right? I mean, just hard evidence, right? I mean, is a mile an hour or two all that much different? No, in no. reality it's not, but. But it's not drastic. 
Well, here's the thing. It's also it's slower. not faster. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't care if it's point one, it's slower, right? Yeah. Because that's that's how it adds up that's in the, the fish bay. You know? Lighter does not always equal faster. Correct. So there we go. There we go. There's myth video part one. We're gonna have some fun ones next time too. Yes. I'm gonna dig into the stay tuned for next the, time. The golf myth yeah. window. We're gonna see what we come up with. All right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of WGC Fits, guys. Um, have a good one and we will see you next time. We'll see you.